The presence of the National Cyber Force NCF, in the UK is now publicly recognized after months of rhetoric and the launch of aggressive cyber measures by them. The organization's responsibilities include countering threats from terrorists, criminals, and hostile countries. The group's staff will work under the new command, along with the British intelligence agency MI6 and the cybersecurity agency GCHQ. The new command has been in operation since April, and its presence was publicly acknowledged by Prime Minister Boris Johnson on Thursday. The idea is that when British troops go to war, cyber operations work in conjunction with conventional forces. One possible scenario is that the organization may try to hack the air defense systems of enemy countries to help the British Air Force. This important force was not created for military purposes only. It will also be able to face daily difficulties. The NFC's practical mission is to damage the communications system of those who pose a threat to the UK in any way. This may include things like making an accused's mobile phone unusable so that he cannot talk to his colleagues. Or damage the network of a cybercrime group to prevent attacks such as the 2017 WannaCry in which data from the NHS and other organizations was corrupted. Surprising ability can be a key factor in this, and perhaps that's why authorities are reluctant to give further details. However, another way is to talk to the attackers and try to discourage them. The new command has been in operation since April and its head is briefed on all ongoing operations. Recruitments to this command are being made from the existing Army, MI6 and Defense Science and Technology Laboratories. MI6 officers may also be involved if an operation is being conducted internationally. The goal of the new organization is to employ 3,000 people over the next 10 years. However, the UK has been working on cyber attack capabilities for the past 10 years, using them for the first time in Afghanistan, as well as against the so-called Islamic State terrorist organization in Iraq and Syria. In 2018, GCHQ director Jeremy Fleming cited a major offensive cyber attempt to undermine Islamic State's propaganda and undermining its ability to carry out attacks. Officials have not yet clarified whether these capabilities have been used against another state. However, there have been reports of scripts being poisoned in 2018 and used to target Russia and counter unverified information during the corona epidemic. The formation of this organization was not a straightforward matter. There has been a lot of fighting between the GCHQ and the Ministry of Defense over its leadership. It has now been decided that the approval of the Foreign Secretary and the Secretary of Defense will be required for various types of operations. Meanwhile, many countries in the world have improved their cyber capabilities. Russia is accused of carrying out cyber attacks in various ways that do not fall into the category of conventional military combat. Doing so makes it difficult to distinguish between war and peace. In this regard, Western countries have spent a lot of time organizing themselves, but now they are fighting with new weapons in this new style of war. General Paul is heading the Cyber Command in the United States. Its strategy is for continuous engagement and forward defense. He has targeted Russia's Internet Research Agency, which interfered in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Ratania says it can compete with Russian capabilities in many ways, but wants to emerge as a responsible cyber power. This means that external surveillance and more risky operations require ministerial approval. However, it is a difficult and interesting question as to how far Britain can go with these weapons.